The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the August 16th. Wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, and more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in, 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, you can always send me an email at steve at tfnn.com. Inside that heading, put radio show question, please. And, of course, inside the tiger's dead well, any ping will do. Vasily. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show right now, the Dow. Trade up 67 points at 22,065. S&P up 7, 2471 is the print. NASDAQ up, and all these are up about three tenths of a percent, give or take. And in NDX 100 up 20 points. Russell up five. Semis up three. Uh, gold is up a buck 30 right now, trading at 1281. Silver's up 21 pennies, trading at 1692. Lights we crude back 17 cents, trading at 4738. We'll go figure out what all those are trading into and what it means to the upside dollar wise, individual stock wise. You're looking at Google up eight bucks and change. Biogen, BWIB up seven bucks. AutoZone up six. Alta Beauty up six. Uh, Equinix up uh, five bucks. O'Reilly Automotive up five. To the downside, it's a Will Dan Group. Group down 380. Uh, Henry Jack and Associates off 360. Dorman Products off a couple of bucks. Uh, nothing big to the uh, downside. Percentage wise, it's just that uh, Wilden Group, W L D N, for those of you that want to check that out. Otherwise, uh, kind of smooth sailing. So first, let's take a look at uh, hey, hey, Steve, what are the markets doing? Excellent question. Well, Right now, what they are doing is bumping up against, uh, well, some of them. One of them is bumping up against resistance. Now, we say that by just simply going and taking a look at this chart here. Daily time frame chart is what you're looking at. Upper left-hand quadrant happens to be the ES Mini. Upper right-hand quadrant happens to be the NASDAQ. Lower left is the Dow. Lower right is the Russell 2000. The one that is up against resistance, has been up against resistance most of the morning, has been lower left, has been the Dow Equity Futures contract. As we take a look at it, you're going to see that that top of the box is priced at 22.055. We're trading at 22.046. The high so far today has been 21.969. Now, look, if I switch this to a weekly time frame, I'll do that. The lines that will change here will be the weekly market profiles. You'll see, hey, guess what? There is no resistance on the weekly, so it's going to all be about the uh, daily. So what do we know about these market profiles? Well, you have sellers, at essence, that believe that they should be lined up at the 22.055 level. We'll see if buyers can overrun them. Now, we're trading into that swing point. Daily chart, again, that we're looking at from August the 8th. So we're up here. That means if we go take a look at cash indices, we're trading inside those swing points as well. What's the one thing that uh, you and I know? This is not how markets top. You don't go up and you can test and retest and test. That is not how a significant top is formed in the market. Doesn't mean you can't have declines, doesn't mean we can't consolidate, but that is not the way a significant top in the market 
is formed out there. Hey, let's go out to Ormond Beach and speak with uh, Mike about the volatility index. Mike, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Steve, I'm doing great. Yesterday, towards the end of your show, you mentioned something about the VIX maybe starting an um, initiation move. And um, also on the chart that I have, the VIX looks like it's above the 50-day exponential moving average. At this point, do you think we could get a small pop-up in the VIX? So, okay, so let me let me try to, I'm going to pull up, I'm looking for this other chart that you're referring to, and let me just make sure that I clarify uh, what spot, I said. Excuse me? Yeah, the spot VIX I'm talking about. Exactly, exactly. So with regard to an initiation move, what I was referring to there, Mike, was uh, this chart here, which is of the S&P 500. And when the volatility index, the spot volatility index, has a one-day rate of change of greater than minus 10 percent, that means minus 10 to minus 11, you know, anything south of minus 10 percent, oftentimes what that creates is an initiation move for price to move higher. So therefore, if price is going to move higher, then the spot volatility index, for the most part, should move lower. And on my chart here that's on the screen, people can see those other initiation day moves. And it doesn't have to be wide-ranging bars that take place after that. It's just a pattern that is out there. And this has happened plenty of times within a couple of days when the spot volatility index has had a one-day rate of change greater than 10% out there as well, which we know when we see that occur, you identify a bouncer bottom inside of the market. So that's the first thing that I had said. Your specific question was, is it possible that the uh, spot volatility spot volatility index will bounce so what is that time frame it is that you're putting me on the uh, spot here for well just a just short term maybe like for a couple days i know i know like you and some of the other technicians were implying that the dow may be coming up towards some very short term resistance so i was wondering if you saw that we could possibly have just a small pullback in the dow maybe like a couple days or something like that. Well, so that's a great question. I'm glad you asked. So the the the, the volatility index is looking at the S and P 500 or the S and P 100 futures out there. Uh, so if we take a look at uh, yes, the Dow is up against resistance. Doesn't mean that it's not going to break it out. But the ES mini has much further to run before it runs into resistance. That level uh, for you, Mike, is up at the uh, 2476 area. So okay. if if you were to see a close today, as an example, in the ES Mini, below the bottom of its box, this is a box that formed uh, yesterday, that level would be 24.1850. That would then suggest to me that, yes, you should see the spot volatility index move higher. The other level that I would be looking for as a confirmation of that would be the spot volatility index closing above, right now that number is $12, $12 even, Stephen. If it closes above 12, then a continued move higher would make sense. But, boy, you've got to have both those things in place out there, in my opinion. Okay. You can hold, you can hold through the break if you want to ask more questions. It's up to you. Okay. I'll hold. All right. We'll be back. Mike in Ormond Beach will answer every question we possibly can. Dow's up 45. S&P's up 5. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNM.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're on the line with Mike from Ormond Beach, and we're taking a look at the spot volatility index, the uh, chart that's on the screen right now is the S&P 500. And so the figure that I gave you uh, earlier, Mike, just before we went to that break, was 12 bucks uh, inside the spot volatility index. And that was the top of a, a Bollinger Band reading. Uh, this is not your standard default. This is using a 50 slash one reading on there, one standard deviation. And uh, the typical pattern that occurs out here, especially when you see a bust out like we did a couple of days ago, and you had that one big volatility increase of, I don't remember, 40% or something like that. Everything has been acting, the spot volatility index, the way that it should. Now, what it's done so far today, didn't do it yesterday, what it's done so far today, it's uh, testing and thus far has rejected the top of that band, 12 bucks. If you see a close below that, this would tell me that the spot volatility index is going to come down and at least test 11.03. 11.03 is a 50-day exponential moving average. If it closes below that, then what you're going to see is you're going to see price get down to the 9.50 area. 9.48 is the number right now. It'll change over the next several days. But basically, it'll be the bottom of the band that will become the target. That will then go ahead and send the S&P 500 to much higher highs out there. So that's the reading with regard to the VIX and how I would take a look at it. So today's close, I think, will be important for you there. Is that okay? Is that, I, now, I don't know if you can, it doesn't sound to me like you can see the chart. So, you know, go back and watch the archive and you'll see what it is we're taking a look at. I will. And, Steve, I want to thank you for bringing so many great tools uh, to us. And uh, I've been trading in and out of the TVIX. Uh, and what I've been utilizing is the one day rate of change. It's been getting me out with some good profit. Well, great. So, and, and that's, that's, Oh, you're, well, you're welcome, and that's the way to—that's the way to use it. You know, when you get on that right side of the trade, uh, inside yeah. the volatility index, and you get those one-day rates of change out there, uh, it's just the big—it's the—it's the hugest signal you can get to say, take your money and run, just take yeah. it. You know, yeah. and is it going to work all the time? No, but it works so well so much of the time. Why would you fight the tape, so to speak, out there? So, and and you're welcome. You know, thanks for thanks for uh, being here, supporting us, uh, supporting everyone. 
Okay, well, thanks, and uh, thanks again for all you do for us, Steve. Have a great day. You bet. Best of luck to you. That was uh, Ormond Beach, which is up on the eastern, if you're not familiar with where Ormond Beach is, folks, uh, uh, just uh, in the Daytona area. So uh, thanks for calling, Mike. So the Dow is up 45. S&P is up 5. I believe before the call, we were taking a look at some of these market profiles. Now, we really discussed two of them out there because we did take a look at the ES Mini. Now, the move so far that we saw, we saw this little bit of a sell-off. Uh, you know, the market move, it's the bots that are doing a lot of this selling out there. You know, ciphering through the news, um, you know, and whenever, you know, it's the, the, the issues with regard to now the strategic and policy forum, you know, that Trump had. I don't know how strategic. I don't know what kind of policy. It doesn't matter. But what we can take a look at if we dive down a little bit deeper into the ES mini out here. So it just kind of is along the lines of what Mike was looking at. Price went right down where it was supposed to. Now you say where it was supposed to. Look, if we just look at a 30 minute chart out here. There's a brand new profile that from within the past couple of hours, the bottom of that box is 2467. You need to see a close below 2467 to get your skirt in it. Is he? Otherwise, all price did during that little news media blitz out here was just come down and test that level of support. Now, did it get a little bit lower? Yes, it did. Well, if you take a look at the 60-minute chart, the hourly chart out here, brand new profile has formed during this hour. Bottom of that box is 24.68. So now you got 67, 68. Those are levels of support. doesn't matter to me which side of the trade you're on. What you want to know is where's support, where's resistance. Go up another time frame. Go to the 240-minute chart out there. Well, the top of that box is 24.66. So you got 66, 67, 68. All prices done has come down and tested a level of support. What happens after the Fed minutes? Another thing that these bots will be ciphering through, they decide or just sellers decide to sell the market. Where is it that price would head down to? Well, your price targets then become the 2459 level would be the first thing I would look at. And that's the bottom of the daily box. Can it get below that? Sure. 2457, a couple more points, the bottom of that 240 minute time frame chart. And if everything goes to heck in a handbasket, which I doubt will happen, not unless we get the uh, Kim uh, Donald uh, bickering session going back and forth. Um, but if everything did go to heck in a handbasket, then you'd be looking at the 2419 level out here. So I would anticipate the markets are going to stabilize a little bit here, wait till two o'clock, um, you know, and then uh, and then go from there. But those are levels that you want to pay attention to. Likewise, uh, to the upside, we were talking about the uh, Dow. And so if you see the Dow close above today, Equity futures contract, 22055. She's going to not only test the highs, which isn't that much higher, the highs being 22132 from August 8th out there. It's going to go ahead and take those highs out and continue moving higher. Now, how do I know that? Well, I don't, but that would be my presumption. And my presumption is because this is not how market tops of any significance are formed. You just don't come back and test it. And we're doing that in everything with the exception of the Russell 2000, which does have a active Gartley buy pattern. The uh, Russell 2000 is the only one that on its way down completed a 1 to about 1.272 A to B equals CD with a bullish pattern out there. Hasn't done a whole lot since then, but uh, the weak link out here is communicating to you that it's uh, trying, it's doing everything that it can to form a bottom. Now, what other levels are important the, uh, for us to take a look at? You know, inside the Dow, there's also this level, Stevie's red line, which is just a little bit above where we're at. It looks like 22.049, so it kind of lines up with the top of that box out there. You close above the market profile, you close above Stevie's red line. In essence, what happens inside the YM is it gets back to the bullish case, the bullish scenario out there. Now, if that's really going to get bullish, then you want to see the other indices or the equity futures contracts do the same. So inside that weak link out here, and I believe we made mention of this yesterday, even though we've got the bullish pattern, it really hasn't confirmed, not confirmed the way Stevie and you like to see it. And what we do like to see is you and I do use a red line, and we pay attention to the red line. 
Because when price crosses above, either above or below, crosses above, crosses either above or below that red line, you're willing to take action. In this case here, that number is 1398 on the Russell Equity Futures contracts. Now, I've got a 10-minute delay here, so it's not really trading at 1385, or at least I don't believe it's trading right at 1385. And not until you see price close above that, is that going to confirm that Gartley buy pattern? We can see here yesterday, all price did is went up, tested CB's red line, rejected it. means we still have a falling price oscillator below zero. It always makes that bullish Gartley buy pattern a tad suspect. Won't be suspect any longer should it close above 1398 and probably a little bit change. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com <laughs> Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, we've got an uh, email here from Phil. Phil writes in, hi, Steve. Hi, Phil. Uh, I am in MDXJ. That's a mimetics group out there. I'm in MDXJ from 1632. Looks like an A to B equals CD on the daily chart to the 24 area at the 1 to 1 and possibly a channel up to near 30. Do you agree? So let's go take a look at uh, MDXJ. Let's start with the uh, daily chart, since Phil mentioned the daily chart. And as you and I take a look at this, 
You're going to see that this had one heck of a move off of the lows in uh, February, February 2nd, 2007. This equity here went from uh, low tick was 764. You're at 1699 as we speak right now. So a heck of a move makes a basically a straight line, B line to the May 16th high. I don't know what's out there. We'll look at the weekly chart out there and see if there was anything. Uh, but that's a high of 1540 and then really consolidates sideways uh, up until really yesterday. Uh, if we look for bearish reversal signals, you'll see the one on May 17th, but we're well past that. But you'll also see this little bearish engulfing candle here from June 26. So the theory goes like this, Phil, and that is that old resistance should become new support. So the support on this equity, you're in at 1632, really should be, for all intents and purposes, one level you'd look at would be 1620. If you close below 1620, then that says you can get back into the 1440 level as I look at this daily chart out here, um, which is where this uh, real sideways consolidation area um, hovered for about um, a couple of months out here. So that's what I would be looking at. With, with regard to the A to B equals CD, let's just take a look at it on the weekly chart out here. I think it's a little bit easier to take uh, a look at. And uh, here we're still starting out. In this case, we're going back to January 30th. That's what I would use as the A point. And we'll take a look on the weekly chart. You know, was that B point? Again, and we're using here, the B point's going to be June 26th the week of June 26. Nice big old bearish engulfing candle as well. And the retracement, uh, not a huge retracement, really. So your C point looks like it's, uh, let's see, with that low, I can't really read it, 1427, 1428. Yeah, so it's going to be this week of July 10th. Uh, only a 22% retracement out there. So the first move forecasted, the one to one, would be 2283. You've got uh, 24 bucks. The one to 1.275 would be about uh, 2516. And if we look at the week that began June 26, the volume there was 4.5. 5 million shares, you are already at 8.4 million shares. As long as this equity this week closes above 1620, then yes, you have a confirmed A to B equals CD. Then you pick an area, 2283, 2516, uh, even 2812. Just depends on how this continues to move over the uh, coming weeks out here. And if we switch over, take a look at the monthly chart. Well, this is an IPO that dates back just into the 2008 time frame, February of 2008 out there. So not a lot of data, certainly no resistance on the left-hand side. You like stocks like this at highs that keep making higher highs out here. So, Phil, uh, congratulations on that trade, uh, trade and uh, best of luck to you. Um, I don't see any other uh, questions at the uh, moment, so let's go back to the uh, let's go back to the main screen out here and see what do we want to take a look at. Let's go look at uh, Goldilocks. Try to figure out what is gold doing, and let's uh, get this chart, which was the MDX chart. Let me see if uh, how quickly I can get this thing up to gold. Let's go try to figure out where Stevie's red line is now. We're not so interested, I mean, we're interested where gold is trading as we speak right now, but it's really going to be an end of the day uh, as the uh, markets uh, chew on the uh, Fed notes out there. But what we do know, or what I know, is that if, in fact, gold were to close above Stevie's red line, of course, I'd want to see what is gold. What is the yen doing? That red line level as we speak at 134 is 128030. 128030. If gold closes below Stevie's red line to 128030 out here, then you're going to have a confirmed message that it wants to continue pulling back. Now, that pulling back uh, may not be that deep may not be that deep unless a brand new daily market profile level is breached. Let me show you what I mean out here. Because today in the gold contract on the daily on the da the daily uh, time frame out here, brand new profile formed overnight. So it's different than the levels that we were taking a look at yesterday. Now, this is a bullish scenario box from the standpoint, not of where the center of the box is, but simply from the mere fact that this daily profile formed above the prior profile.
So support on this is 1260, Just as you and I, we're looking at those support levels inside the ES, the YM. Maybe we looked at the NQ. I don't recall the Russell 2000. So if gold closes below Stevie's red line and then closes below 1260, that would be a very clear bearish message. You close above Stevie's red line and the uh, and the thought that gold was going to pull back further, that has got to go out the door. And that would, in fact, say that gold should head up to the top of the new daily box, which is 1294, 1294.60 to be exact. Now, that's going to be an important number for everybody to watch. Let's say gold has a bullish outcome today. Well, 1293.60 is the top of the weekly box. So within $1, $1, Mortimer, uh, what we have is a real key level to be watching to give a very clear signal as to what gold wants to do. So a clear signal to the upside, right now it's resistance. A clear signal to the downside, close below 1266. And then 1253 is certainly in the cards out there. It doesn't seem like a whole lot. That'll only be 13 bucks below. But those are the levels that you want to be looking at out there. I don't know which way it is going to go. If we take a look at the uh, Japanese yen, this thing has had a little bit of a reversal of fortune here today. Uh, and as we take a look at it, it just ran into resistance thus far of that dead cat bounce at 0 0.382 retracement level. That's a 110.93. That is the area that you want to pay attention to because should the yen continue to weaken, and yes, weaken on this chart means heading north, moving higher. If it were to close above 110.93, that's not going to be good for gold. That's not going to be good for bonds out there. And um, it's going to make the U.S. or it will attribute some portion of the U.S. dollar index getting stronger out there. So 110.93 would be the level to be watching at the end of the day inside of the yen. We didn't take a look at silver. We should go take a look at silver. That's up uh, one and two tenths percent out here. Let's go see what it's doing in relation to its market profiles out here. And on the 60 minute time frame, let's see it. You see nothing but green shoots on the uh, 240. Um, it's trading right into the resistance of the top of the box, 1692 out here. So if uh, silver and gold respond for whatever reason positively to uh, this the rest of the afternoon to the uh, to the, uh, the 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 regurgitation that sounds pretty nasty doesn't it of the fed minutes out here you watch for 1724 to be resistance and above that 1780 that's your upside target i don't know which way it's going to go but we'll know soon enough steve roach Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan 
Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. So uh, a couple of emails have come in. A question in the 10 uh, was uh, first. So it says, uh, SR, thanks uh, for the thorough index review. One question, as you see it, if the ES Mini declines to, to what price would trigger larger selling? Any ideas of that? So let's try to answer it uh, this way. Uh, again, a brand new market profile formed on the daily out here you can see this this was just yesterday and uh so if it uh, closed below 24.59 is the first piece of bad news we always target the prior swing point so immediately what comes to my visual area of a price target is going to be the low of august 11th out there that's in the 24 30 area somewhere right around there um that's the first area. Now we go to weekly. At weekly, we have 24.1950 as the bottom of its box. This is a box that uh, began forming this week out here. So that becomes our initial price target area. If those levels fall, that's where I would say that's so that's where you would start to trigger perhaps larger selling. Um, and then you've got to go just simply to a simple trend line, I think. That simple trend line is just coming off of the lows out here from March 27th. Again, a weekly chart that we're looking at your next touch point probably the week of May 15th. Um, then you get below that and you're all the way back to the swing points from March of 2017, right? It's just a swing point kind of analysis target area. So that is what I would be looking at uh, uh, John, inside the uh, Tiger's Den, how's that sound to you? Um, there was also another follow-up question from somebody said, I knew it was out there. Very good. Okay. Uh, somebody also said, how about the NQ? Oh, Peter in Park City. Hey, Peter, how you doing? Uh, so let's go take a look at the NQ. Same question out here. And inside the NQ... Uh, the 5872 level. Now, you don't have a brand new box or anything, but should the NQ close below 5872, then the same thing. We're going to go ahead and have to target the swing point from last week on Thursday. So that's going to be somewhere in the 5761 level. Let's remember 5761. Actually, so 5761 breaks. Then you've got the weekly, which is 5734. So I would say, Peter, 5734. Interestingly enough, at 5734, you also have this trend line. This is a weekly chart we're looking at. That takes us back to November 7, 2016 as your primary touch point. Your next touch point below or is going to be December 5th low out there, which also just kind of intersects with the low from July the 3rd, the week 
that began July 3rd. So 20, uh, 5734 is a real key area for you to be watching. What happens if price gets below that? Then you just simply have to come back to the lows from the week of July 3rd. You know, that becomes the price target area. Looks like about, what, 56? I couldn't read it through all that nonsense, uh, 5560 would really be the number. And you get below that, that would precipitate some fairly significant selling. Oh, what I want you to pay attention to, and the reason why we can say this, look, this is some pretty significant levels of support out here inside of the NQ, that longer term trend line. When I say longer term, I'm going back to November of last year. So what, um, 10 months, something along those lines, the bottom of a weekly profile that's new that has a bullish structure, bullish structure, because the center, the cyan color of the box closer to the bottom. So, Peter, I hope that that answers your question. That's what I would be looking for out there. So um, let's go on to the uh, next question. Now, the next question coming in from our um, our uh, our expeditioner, and this is Alex. Now, I'm just going to put it while I'm going to read his question out here. This is a uh, picture of where Alex is at. Now, he's not on top of the mic. No, that's not him waving to us, although I wish we could have a picture like that. But he says he's off of the mountain, but he said he might stay there. So beautiful. That is, um, you know, Denali, Mount McKinley area in Alaska. It sure looks beautiful, does it not? Now, he is out there actually listening in live. So let's go try to answer his question. And let's get back to this uh, three time frame. So uh, went short, BMCH. Let's go put that ticker symbol in here, BMCH. Says... Um, with a $21.05 stop loss. Maybe 2105 is the stop loss. Yeah, I'd say 2105 is the uh, stop loss. Okay, it's only a $20 equity. Hello. Um, 18th low, okay, will be your target. So the low of the 18th, he's all the way down here, I believe, the 18th, the 18th, the 18th. 18th will be my target. 18, probably 18 bucks. There we go. I'll eventually, hey, hey, hey sorry about that, Alex. I'll, I'll eventually get your code words out here. So what he's looking at first with regard to where the stop is placed, well, here, let's give him the stop. The stop out here, you've got is 21.05. So the stop right now, you must be using somewhere right around this, uh, this little breakdown area, which is the bottom of the gap. The bottom of the gap there is 21.10. 2110. Don't use 2105. Can't use 2105. This coming back up, if it were to bounce back up and actually uh, test the low of the trading session of August 2nd, would be nothing more than testing resistance. So it needs to be a bit above that. A close above 2110, and then you'd want to perhaps go ahead and close it out, look at volume, things along those sides. But I think 2105 is, is just a, a hair shy of where you would like to have that stop. Now, the bottom of the daily profile right now, support. Could be 1938. That's what it's showing on our screen. You're inside a box that is structured uh, from the bearish side. This says that really the entire box should be explored. The top we know, 2070, or if you didn't know, that's what it is. And the bottom being 1938. Now, what we do know is that uh, the swing point that had formed back in May 13th only had 500,000 shares, yet it held 1.9 million shares down on August the 3rd. So breaking through that area to get to 18 could be some very tough sledging out there, if sledging is a word, because a swing point with lighter volume held out here, and now you need more than 1.9 million shares to really bust through that area to get some type of A to B equals CD to the downside out there. So. I would say for me, your price target is actually 1905. Then you've got to do the old reward risk. Now, positive note, if that wasn't positive, is on the weekly chart. And on the weekly chart, you're below all kinds of weekly profile levels out there. But you know what? It still doesn't change our target level. The target level, if you were looking at the weekly chart, uh, I would be targeting the swing point out here, Alex, uh, all the way back from the week of October 31st, 2016, in the 1545 to 1670 area out here. That's the swing point that sort of sticks out to me uh, inside ticker symbol uh, BMCH. That's BMC stock 
Holdings Inc. out there. And then finally, you've got support at seventeen ninety eight. There's your eighteen dollar level. That would be the it would be the monthly uh, bottom of its box out there. So a uh, best of luck to you on this uh, trade. Uh, we will say he says please say hi to all the tigers and tigresses. And that was Alex, our doctor. That is in-house. Sean sends in a, a question, says, I bought Nugget, or Nut, Nugget, at 2087 today, just uh, dating, not married. So we want to go see where this date could actually take Sean to. GDX is stronger than the GLD. We'll go take a look at that for Sean when we get back from this break. Zero TF. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. EverBank bank is a member fdic and equal housing lender if you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to tom o'brien's daily market letter market insights Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts and keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. Hey, uh, John in Sarasota. I know you sent me an email, but there's no subject and no uh, message line out there, so I can't get to your question. I'm good. I'm just not that good to read uh, read minds out here. In the meantime, let's spend time with Sean and take a look at the uh, GDX. And he is not married, just dating the GDX. It got in that at 2087. Right now, you're at 2289. So uh, nice. Here's what I would be uh, focused on. 
couple of things. First, there's a brand new profile. This formed here two days ago. One of the levels that you want to uh, look at to extend the date would be a close above 2320. Now, this profile has a bearish uh, structure to it, somewhat bearish structure, meaning the center of the box closer to the top. So closing above 2320 would say, hey, you know what? Maybe this is going to go up to the Alaska date that you had out here, which was June the 6th out of the 2386 level. There were 97 million shares out at that trading day. You've done 15 million shares today. So you've got what we'll call an ultralight if you were flying out there. And this uh, has been flying for you, uh, but it's flying with light volume out here. Still, nonetheless, 2320 is the number you're watching. If this were to close below 2272, you're in a 2087. And then what that would be saying to me is uh, you're going to go test 2214. You could still stay in it. But if you close below 2214, you probably want to go ahead and pack in that date and uh, just say, uh, hey, go back to the next dating service out there and uh, try for, uh, yeah, I won't even I won't even touch any more of that. You, you kind of get the message there, Sean? I, I think so. So uh, nice trade so far. Watch those levels, again, being 2320, 2214. You close below 2272. It's very suspect out there. Uh, yeah, 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 you know, you just suspect. Maybe what you want to do is go Dutch at that stage of the uh, game. So, folks, I believe that this is the end of the show. Hey, David White, polar bear, could you get me a new clock, please? In any event, stay tuned because your favorite polar bear and mine is up next. That's David White. After that, you got Tom O'Brien from 3 to 5. We'll see you on Terrific Thursday, folks. Take care. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.